with this we come to indirect signs so why there is a need for indirect signs because direct signs are time consuming they are tedious and they are extremely operator dependent so which are the indirect signs these are acceleration time acceleration index acceleration early systolic peak overall waveform shape and resistive index difference so we will see one by one so acceleration time is the time from start of systole to its peak ai is the slope of early systolic rise so what are the criteria there are different studies again but the acceleration time of more than 0.1 seconds or if you if your machine gives you it in milliseconds then it is 100 milliseconds or initially by honda et al what was described was acceleration time more than 0.07 seconds that will be 70 milliseconds will be considered as diagnostic of in renal artery stenosis in the segmental arteries when you take the acceleration time so this is what we have seen before start of systole to the early systolic peak that is the first systolic peak and this is the acceleration time and this is the acceleration which is a ratio which is a slope actually so this is a normal first peak or a early systolic peak this is abnormal as the time taken for the systole to reach its early systolic peak is prolonged and this is also abnormal so where do we measure the at starting point is here and this is the end point so as you can see here the acceleration time is 204 milliseconds which is more than 100 milliseconds and as even you can make out eyeballically that there is the pulse it is slow to rise and acceleration time is increased what is the parvus tardus pattern parvus is a small pulse or a partial pulse and tardus is a pulse slow to rise and slow to fall so this is a typical parvus tardus pattern parameters 3 and 4 were acceleration and the early systolic peak loss of early systolic peak would be detectable by pattern recognition alone in fact it would not require any measurements it might be quick and it might have an advantage over at and ai with practice so one must learn to identify the early systolic peak as you can see here this is not the early systolic peak this is the early systolic peak this is the early systolic peak when the spectrum comes something like this it is easier to know that this is the early peak but when the spectrum is little broad like this one has to understand the systolic peak is here and it is not here so what is assessment of overall waveform shape it is the recognizing this pattern helps prevents false positive diagnosis it is usually minor in all parts of both kidneys and waveform shape determines how technically it may be difficult to demonstrate the normal esp see in this case as you know this is the first or the early systolic peak and it is easy to recognize the sixth parameter is the ri difference it is the decreased pulsatility which is seen in the renal artery stenosis in segmental artery normally the difference is less than minus 5 so this is not a very effective criteria as the other parameters using it in conjunction with other indirect parameters might be useful so we don't really use it very frequently in practice so what are the limitations and pitfalls of indirect parameters it is the inability to distinguish renal artery stenosis from occlusion if you go only by indirect parameters and see that there is a renal artery stenosis but you will not know whether it is complete occlusion or whether it is stenosis in complete occlusion stenting will not be possible but in a renal artery stenosis it will be possible if there is an accessory renal artery again you really can't make out by just scanning the indirect parameters decreased sensitivity of these parameters in patients with medical renal disease when the parenchyma is affected then these parameters are not very sensitive and bilateral parvus tardus pattern caused by lesions proximal to renal arteries that is coarctation aortic stenosis these will give rise to the same kind of pattern in aorta 
in right renal artery, in left renal artery and then if you only go by indirect parameters, you will feel that there is renal artery stenosis where in fact there is no renal artery stenosis but there is some problem with the aorta. As you can see here, in the aorta itself the spectrum is biphasic and it is a parvastatus kind of a spectrum. In the kidney, left kidney, right kidney it is again a parvastatus pattern but as you will see in the femoral arteries also the pattern was like this and that is because of the aorto arteritis which was affecting the main aorta itself and that's why all the arteries were giving this kind of an appearance so in this case if you go only by indirect parameters you will miss out the diagnosis so what is the plus and minus points of direct versus indirect so one can say that indirect interrogation is a must in every patient if they are normal the direct interrogation may not be necessary indirect parameters are abnormal or equivocal then one must look at the direct parameters in practice it is always a good habit to start scanning by aorta and then do a transverse section from the epigastrium down try and always visualize the renal main renal arteries in its entire extent sometimes it may be technically difficult that time you go for indirect parameters see that they are normal then you may not really if even if you're not able to scan the entire segment of renal arteries it may still be acceptable if your indirect parameters are normal but if the indirect parameters are equivocal or abnormal then one has to interrogate the renal artery in its entire extent so to conclude in the report what should be mentioned first line should always be written as renal doppler was done to rule out more than or equal to 60% stenosis. This is very important. Grayscale imaging of the kidneys should be always there in the report. The aorta PSV should be given. Main renal artery origin, mid region and at hilum where PSV and EDV are given. Look for stenosis, turbulence etc. on color doppler. Segmental arteries PSV, EDV, RI and acceleration time are mentioned. We also write if the flow is reaching up to the periphery or not in both the kidneys. So the technique of segmental renal artery spectral waveform is easier, quicker and more frequently successful than direct interrogation of main renal arteries. A thorough understanding of Doppler physics and meticulous technique are necessary to get the interpretable waveforms and to achieve adequate accuracy and which we have seen in our first part very well.